everybody. My name is uh, James Emanuele, and I'm uh, the Chief Architect for Aaron Structure Technology. Uh, the presentation today is going to discuss um, application overlay, and what we're really talking about that is uh, how to layer in applications to achieve things like collaboration without necessarily adding um, expensive infrastructure or doing complete overhauls with your environment. And part of layering in the applications, it's critical to understand uh, some of the technology that's trending in the marketplace and is really coming to the fore forefront. And particularly, we're talking about Web 2.0 technology. Now, Web 2.0 is really just a, uh, a term or a name for certain technologies. And we'll talk about what makes up Web 2.0. We'll talk about the management of Web 2.0, technologies that are using Web 2.0, and then also uh, we'll discuss some of the quick wins that we can do as businesses to implement Web 2.0 technology and uh, as well as um, some of the different products out there that offer uh, Web 2.0 that we can implement and also achieve an application overlay. Sorry, my, uh, my screen froze here, a little bit of technical difficulties. So I mentioned that we're going to discuss the technologies that make up a Web 2.0 architecture. Uh, and particularly, we're talking about um, a Java type of environment that uses uh, Ajax. Some of you may have uh, solutions in place today that utilize this technology already. Uh, for example, some of the newer uh, Avaya products, Cisco products, Microsoft clearly. Um, and then talking about really your, your end user environment, uh, this really became a trend with the introduction of the cloud, right, Microsoft, uh, get in the cloud, and then also through some of your mobile providers, like, like your iPhones, your iPads, your Androids, uh, even BlackBerry got into this market a little bit later than the others. But what it created was uh, a Web 2.0 environment on your mobile device for access to app applications, right? It created a, and I got an app for that. And so talking about Java, you look at web apps that use a JavaScript. Uh, you're, you're talking about menus, um, drop downs, tabs, um, things like that within the application, mouse overs, pop up windows client-side form validations. And the reason, the reason that these works is you really have a two-way communication between the client side and your application. Some of the ones that do not use JavaScript example are text and static images, web forms, and hyperlinks, right? Those are really one-way communication with your app or your server. Um, you don't have that two-way um, kind of on-demand communication with your app. Okay, Ajax is asynchronous JavaScript and XML, so it's a combination of, uh, of Java and XML. Um, <clears throat> Ajax is an approach to developing web applications, and it differs from a traditional approach. The browser makes an actual HTTP request that may or may not be uh, due to a user action. Um, this is just a simple example. You know, a clock application may automatically make an HTTP request uh, every second. Obviously, it's up updating the time automatically. And then how it differs from traditional, the reply is such a request that does not contain a full new page. It contains information that is used to update portions of the existing page. So like I was talking about before, when you're utilizing uh, a JavaScript or Ajax, you're, uh, you've got a two-way communication that allows you to update the piece of information that's critical to the user. And this is taking a look at you know web web 1.0 versus web 2.0 or, or Ajax really, and there's a large difference. And uh, for most of us in the past five to seven years, the solutions that we implemented in our environment uh, were probably based on a web 1.0 type of architecture. And if you notice in the web 1.0 architecture, 
you're looking at a one-way communication here. Um, you're talking about an application that may have a home page, it sends a request to another app, and so on and so forth. You have this one-way communication versus a Web 2.0, which is your fluid interaction. It's your two-way communication. And for a lot of us uh, that have an architecture in place that's built on a Web 1.0, collaboration uh, within our space or within our applications has been very cumbersome. In fact, I relate it a lot, a lot of times to a bowl of spaghetti. Uh, you've got a lot of wires that are doing physical connectivity. Uh, the communication is one way, so you send the request one way, it's processed, then it sends it back one way. And typically it's utilizing proprietary protocols uh, for that messaging. So it made it very difficult to collaborate solutions. A Web 2.0 model, you're talking about a fluid uh, architecture, two-way communication, and what it really creates is that on-demand information. And it's important as businesses that we understand the consumer market, because of the movement of the mobile space, because of the I got an app for that type of architecture, it really demands that type of uh, interaction with us as businesses today. You're looking at some of the benefits here to an AJAX environment. Uh, improved performance, right? Request processing is broken into smaller pieces. The request processing occurs asynchronously in the background while the user is idle. So again, being able to get the on-demand information without affecting our user experience is critical. Uh, and then you hit on it here, the improved user experience. Users are able to continue to interact with the page or view content while processing occurs behind the scenes. Um, and this could be for uh, whatever application you want to apply it to. Maybe, uh, maybe it's uh, if you're in the medical field, maybe it's your nurse call system, or maybe it's uh, EMR, EHR systems. Uh, if you're in the sports or marketing arena, uh, maybe it's a ticketing system. The key is that the user gets the information on demand from us versus a cumbersome process and sitting there waiting or having to refresh the application to get the data. And seamless data inclusion. AJAX can gather data from multiple well-defined data stores. Multiple AJAX threads can pull data from various sources into the same page. And this is where you start talking about collaboration, right? Most of us have a multiple database environment, whether it's a CRM integrated with a, a telephony system or it's a nurse call system integrated with a, an E911 notification system or some type of uh, patient database. Uh, we have multiple databases, and we want to be able to access that data real time to improve our customer experience, and that's the AJAX difference. That's what it's going to allow us to do. In terms of the data management of these technologies, Web 1.0 didn't really focus on, uh, on data to display content in a browser or send form data and retrieve results. Uh, Web 2.0 puts a lot of emphasis upon accessing and managing the data. It's an XML-based web services, syndicated data feeds. And uh, there's, a, there's a term here that's kind of trendy, and that's the web services term. You'll hear it thrown out a lot with, um, you know, if, you're, if you have an Avaya team that you work with, you'll hear them talk about web services with some of their products, CISO as well, Microsoft, IBM, the mobile makers, they all talk about web services. And when they're talking about web services, they're really talking about utilizing a web 2.0 architecture and utilizing AJAX and JavaScripting to create those applications. So web services, I mentioned it's it's thrown out there as a trendy term, but what you know what is it really? Um, it's an XML-based uh, product. It improves systems integration, and it's the foundational layer for services-oriented architecture. Again, another trendy kind of market term that as businesses we're all trying to get to to improve our customer experience is a service oriented architecture. And by customer that could be our own internal business users or if you have a forward facing uh, customer interaction then it could be your actual uh, your customer base. Uh, Web 2.0 applications leverage these services. Uh, they, re they display the results directly. Use a web service to validate user input and retrieve the data and incorporate it into a mashup. So again, Web 2.0 allows us to retrieve data real time from multiple databases and then utilize that data uh, for whatever the request is from our customer or from our business user.
And I mentioned it before, there's a real focus uh, for businesses right now to be driving to a, uh, a services-oriented architecture, and Web 2.0 makes that possible. Uh, SOA primarily focuses upon enterprise architecture and facilitating the connection of server-based apps, right? So when we talk about services-oriented architecture, we're talking about the collaboration of our servers and our applications, the collaborations of our solutions that affect our customer base. Web 2.0 focuses on the actual client side portion. So what you'll see is in our database side, right, in our IT side, we're talking about uh, services oriented architecture. When we're, when we're talking about the client facing side or what the user is going to experience, we're talking about Web 2.0. And this is a great diagram here. You see a request from the users in an HTML or HTTP format to our web apps, right? You see our application server in the middle there. But then we also have on our back end and our SOA architecture, we're communicating XML um, to all of our databases. And so we, are, we allow ourselves to have collaboration of data so that our response utilizing Web 2.0 to the customer is real time, on demand, and provides the data that they need. And here you go right here, when I talked about the collaboration of Web 2.0 and SOA, you're talking about utilizing uh, XML between both, both platforms, right? This is going to give us the ability, if we wanted to, to bypass our app server and completely consume the services from the actual database. Again, bringing in real-time data to the consumer or to the business user, being able to collaborate our databases, and being able to provide applications um, without increasing necessarily our infrastructure, without making major investments in overhaul and technology. And we'll, towards the end of this, we'll talk about again about some of the quick wins we can do with different, uh, different applications or different solutions that exist out there. Uh, we'll talk about some of the common technology that probably all of us have within our architecture today and how we can implement things like Web 2.0 and SOA to drive that forward. The convergence. I mean, really, you're talking about SOA again. It focuses on the server side. It exposes data and business logic as reusable resources, and promotes architectural layers to separate concerns and promote enterprise-wide reuse. So, being able again to utilize the data from one solution and collaborate it with uh, with maybe another database or another application that's going to need information from that database. Uh, that's what a SOA architecture allows us to do in terms of our databases or our server architecture. The Web 2.0 portion really focuses on the client experience. It gives us easy access to the server-based assets, mash up data from multiple sources, and provide a rich, compelling, and fluid user experience. So on the, on the customer side, they have an application, a web app, as most of us like to say, that they access. And utilizing Web 2.0 and SOA and having that XML integration allows us to, uh, to provide that data, and, uh, and it's fluid, right? The two-way communication between the end user and the server or the databases on the back end. So web services, right? Web services encompasses your Web 2.0 and your SOA architecture. And we'll talk about some of the areas we can find these today. Uh, existing services within the enterprise, services provided by third parties, you know, such as partners, vendors, and governments. Uh, new services created to support a Web 2.0 strategy. And uh, many off-the-shelf products include web service APIs waiting to be used. So I think this is pretty critical for us to understand as businesses, right? We've, we've invested, a lot of us, in the last five to seven years in a certain architecture. Maybe we're utilizing an Oracle database, or maybe we have an Avaya uh, telephony with, um, you know, with an Avaya call center, and we're doing something like CRM integration or patient database integration. It's important to understand that these products, instead of doing major overhauls, the upgrades of these products include web service functionality. It includes a web 2.0 architecture. And what does that mean for us? It means that we can do upgrades to our existing infrastructure, which is uh, honestly you know, a, lot, a lot less expensive and a lot uh, quicker. 
and then we'll have this web 2.0 environment that we can start developing our applications on. So it's important to look at the infrastructure you have in place today and see if, it, if, an, if there's an upgrade path to a web 2.0 technology. And we'll talk more about that again on some of the quick wins and where we can find those within our architecture. The syndicated data feeds, I mentioned it as a bullet earlier in part, in part of the data management. Uh, the content producers publish information such as news and editorial con content, sports scores, product catalog, press releases. Um, content subscribers register with data feeds to receive uh, content. So a web 2.0 application can leverage these feeds. It can display the feed output directly, parse the feed and incorporate it into a mashup, publish content like a blog, a mashup user updates as a feed. I mean, th this is pretty. This is pretty uh, common when you're talking about your iPhone. You're talking about uh, users utilizing things like Facebook or social media, right? They utilize Web 2.0 feeds to provide real-time data through an application that the end user is using. And by implementing a Web 2.0 architecture and a SOA architecture, we can create that same user experience in our businesses and for our business end users as well. There's two, there's two primary data feeds that are used in the market today. Really simple syndication are RSS and Atom. They both work in the same manner. A syndication provider creates a feed, makes it available for syndication clients. An RSS feed is more freeform and broadly accepted. An Atom is more detailed, XMS based, exact, and feature risk. For you know, example, an RSS feed. Uh, there's there's pretty common third-party social media applications that use an RSS feed uh, to provide social media information back to an end user. Uh, or the New York Times has an iPhone app that's using an RSS feed to provide the, the information from the newspaper to the end user. Uh, Atom is a more rigorous XML-based exact feature-rich product. You would see Atom, you would utilize Atom in terms of uh, if you were doing CRM integration where you're providing customer data or you're, you're providing product data or you're accessing a business process through an application. That would be more of an atom feature rich type of uh, feed or syndication feed. So we're talking a lot about Web 2.0, and again, I stress that Web 2.0 is really just the name for the architecture. I talked about Web 2.0 using really a JavaScript, and it's XML-based. And it's important to understand that there's formatting that goes along with these technologies. There's a consistent document structure is required in order to update a portion of a page via AJAX. Consistent document structure and data feed structure are required for mashups. All the content, regardless of its source, should be consistently formatted so that the presentation is seamless. Uh, two, there's two uh, main formatting technologies that enable Web 2.0. Cascading style sheets, which is known as CSS, and if you're a programmer or you have a programming team, maybe you manage one, uh, you'll hear them talk about CSS for consistent look and feel. And then you have XML and XHTML for consistent data and document structure. So Web 2.0, again, not only does it focus on the actual JavaScript uh, or AJAX, which is the JavaScript with XML, to create the integration between data sources and client apps, but the actual formatting of the apps, CSS, XML, and XHTML. So now we're starting to better understand not only how our integration works, but also how our applications are formatted or how they're, the programming languages that are used to actually format a Web 2.0 app for the end user. Cascading style sheets, they provide a convenient mechanism to give a website consistent font, color, and layout. If anybody does any web design, they're probably very familiar with CSS. Um, it's been around since Web 1.0 and has taken on a new significance in the new 2.0 era. This is going to allow us to provide that uh, that web app, right? Our format is going to be CSS, so we can provide that web app or that consistent user interface to uh, to our application. HTML5, uh, it's the next generation of browser markup language. Currently supports 2D graphics, 3D graphics are coming soon. 
uh, used mainly for interactive drawing and rendering dynamic data driven charts, audio and video, used for playing sounds and movies without a browser plugin. That's kind of critical, right? Uh, even today, uh, as some of you joined, if you did not have a GoToMeeting already installed, if you've never downloaded it before, there's a GoToMeeting plugin they had to install just for you to view this, this webinar. HTML5 is going to eliminate the need for those plugins. And it also has browser side data storage, web storage, stores small amounts of data using an easy name value pair based API. Um, there's actually a lot of uh, apps, applications today that, that will store small amounts of data. Uh, if, you're, if you play any games on your iPhone or iPad that uses a small amount of web storage to actually store the data of that game. So we talked a, lot, a little about the integration or the programming language, the AJAX, the JavaScript with the XML. That is our integration between databases and servers. We utilize the XML to create the integration between our client app and our, and our data sources. We also talked about uh, the web app itself, how we're going to format it utilizing CSS or Atom um, and RSS feeds. And we also talked a little bit about some of the other formatting, the up and coming HTML5. So there's ways that we pull this all together, right? Web 2.0 applications are pretty impressive. The user interfaces that rival desktop applications, data collected from multiple sources on the fly, and consistent look and feel, folding content from various sources together seamlessly. That gives a great kind of overview of Web 2.0. And what we're talking about is creating really a web app on demand. I have an app for that environment within your organization. And that's what Web 2.0 allows us to do. It allows us to create the seamless integration of user applications to data sources. And then we also leverage the SOA architecture within our server environment to create the collaboration of databases and sources. And we can accomplish this without necessarily overhauling or adding expensive infrastructure. This is a small uh, diagram. Of, uh, of really what a Web 2.0 environment looks like. If you notice, uh, the CSS and the XHTML for the formatting. Our AJAX is our communication, again, between our client app and our, um, and our application server or our database server. And then Web Services and RSS slash Atom for our data management. So our, our application itself or our user interface, that's formatted in CSS or HTML. XHTML. The request from that application utilizes AJAX to talk to our data sources, and then we utilize web services and RSS slash Atom to create the collaboration or the communication between data sources to provide the real-time data back to our application. The Web 2.0 applications are enabled by several key technologies. You know, we talked about them, the JavaScript and the AJAX the XML web services and the data feeds and the XHTML and CSS for formatting. That's an overview of the technology or the pieces of the technology that make a Web 2.0 applications. And when we're looking at our environments, such as our, maybe it's our Avaya, maybe it's our Cisco, maybe it's our Microsoft, maybe it's our IBM, maybe if you're in the medical field it's your Epic or your Rollins or some other nurse call or EMR or EHR system. What we need to do is look at what our paths are in terms of upgrading those existing technologies to maybe a platform version that offers web services out of the box. Or how can we leverage a middleware to create a true Web 2.0 environment? And there's different middleware uh, components that, that are supporting that, particularly the Avaya Agile creation environment that's truly an open source Web 2.0 development platform. It utilizes a Java telephony API to connect to a telephony system. So if you're utilizing, let's say, a Cisco, you could implement an Avaya Agile creation environment. It still integrate to your telephony, but then you also create these Web 2.0 hooks, I call them. They're these hooks that can hook in to collaborate with different data sources to create that collaboration of your environment. Um, and so quick wins for us as organizations. One, we need to evaluate our existing infrastructure 
and find out if it currently supports web services or a web 2.0 environment. If it doesn't, we need to get with our vendors and understand is there an upgrade path to this type of environment and if not, is there a possible middleware product to actually create the environment for us. All three of these will allow us to do upgrades, will allow us to move forward into a web 2.0 infrastructure without um, without expensive upgrade, without expensive infrastructure enhancements, or without major overhauls. And uh, for you know, for an example, there's some products out there uh, like uh, like Oracle, right? If you guys are using an Oracle database, well, certainly the newer or the newer versions of Oracle, they they're all built on Web 2.0. Uh, so you can you can move right into a Web 2.0 environment through an upgrade versus an expensive overhaul. If you have an Avaya, you can implement things like the Avaya creation environment. The Avaya or architecture utilizes Web 2.0. And then if you're looking at the call center, the, or, the Avaya or contact center has something called a service creation environment. And that's really a Web 2.0 creation environment. It's where you can develop web apps for your end user and create those hooks into your data sources. Cisco and Microsoft all utilize it as well. So it's key that as we move forward with our technology, we understand the capabilities of our existing infrastructure, how we move forward into a Web 2.0 environment, and then what are our vendors or what are our manufacturers doing for the future to really support this Web 2.0 architecture. And, uh, and then with that, I will open it up for any questions.